Welcome back, everybody. Before we look at our next match, let's get your two cents in because earlier we asked you which Summer Split roster change do you think will have the biggest impact and why? And here's what you said. Our first tweet is from at Mr. Fizzletastic. Reckless getting back with my favorite support, Yellow Star, will make Fnatic into a real powerhouse. One game down, that was definitely the case. Yeah, completely. I, I mean, this is one of these tweets that uh, I think everybody has the same mindset on. Is we got a lot of them. <laughs> it, yeah, but I mean, F Fnatic just as a whole looking so strong right now. The funny thing is, uh, you can say the same about teams the likes of SK at the beginning of last split and just petered off throughout the split. So it, it really, it is a game of being good and staying good throughout the entire split. Yeah, I completely agree. And I also thought, like, I'm interested to see the dynamic of Reckless and Fnatic. We know Huni and, and Febbervin got a lot of the priority, got a lot of the carry. Yesterday, with less farm, with less impact on a tank, no less, mm -hmm. Huni was still Huni. Like, yep. yep. What are you going to do? Can't stop the whole lo, lo, lo. Then our second tweet <laughs> is from at Animation Bowler. The biggest roster change is going to be the entire overhaul of elements. They have made this team into a true super team. They stay away from the terminology themselves. They say it laughingly, <laughs> yeah, well, but... Obvi obvious. <laughs> obviously. Well, well, there's two things. Two things. Number one, first and foremost, bonus points for the practical uh, application of the question. They did make the most changes, obviously. Ah. Secondly, I don't know if I'd call it super team. Um, there's quite a debate about whether or not grandfather's coming back to the LCS is experience worth more than young pup hunger? Mm. You know, can you teach an old dog new tricks? That's the question. Elements looked okay yesterday, but they still need to convince me, and we'll see how they perform. Yeah, only in League of Legends do we call 22-year-olds grandpas. <laughs> I'm getting depressed as we speak. Our last tweet is from at lol Yamazuya. When you talk roster changes, you have to talk about Forgiven. Can Gambit be the team that God-given demands? Well, that's an interesting way of putting it. Well, he certainly demanded the farm yesterday <laughs> in, uh, in the game for Gambit, and Gambit you know, bent their play style around Forgiven, as was somewhat to be expected. It worked for SK. It can work for Gambit, but I think there's a little bit of a, a, a trickier thing to mold around, and that's Cabochard. Cabochard uh, was a, a playmaking top laner. He liked to get a lot of farm. They have to get the balance right. You can't just give Forgiven all of the farm, because otherwise you're not getting the effectiveness out of a top laner like I Cabochard. agree, and, and, and very quickly, I think if you add Forgiven and Gosu Pepper, formerly Edward, together, you get this hot potato of an aggressive team. And the question is, how, how good are the oven mitts of the rest of Gambit? Because you've got this very aggressive hot potato you've got to keep yeah. balancing, and yeah. that's what's going to determine whether or not it works. Salt and pepper yesterday, yeah. hot potato. Delicious Gambit team, huh? is a tasty, tasty Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Anyway, you guys, because we're... Uh <laughs> Getting a little bit off center. Be sure to keep adding to the discussion as the week continues. Tweet at LL Esports. Use that hashtag LCS and we'll be reading all of your tweets. Now, speaking of Forgiven, we're going to turn to the match at hand between Rockat and Gambit Gaming. And we're going to start by taking a look at that lineup for Rockat with, of course, that one change in the top lane. Steve, then Jankos, Nukedok, Wulite, Vander, and Yamato Cannon. Uh, their first showing yesterday versus H2K, sadly, more of the same. A lot of focus on uh, Steve and Oduwamna here at the desk also said, well, you know, he's not a bad player. He's mechanically quite good, but we did focus him, which is what's to be expected. So much focusing on Steve. And I think there was a, a bit of a reason for it from H2K going back to yesterday's matchup. Uh, Kasing used to play with Steve. So he knows how good Steve can be. They're so good certainly, friends. yeah, they are good friends. They did uh, used to bake cookies together in the Challenger yep. series. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think they highlighted a very key point is focus on what is new to the team. Focus on maybe a situation that Steve isn't used to with Rocket yet, that they haven't really figured out how do we compensate for our top laner being down. Yeah, and I also think that the fact that he was running a flashless, ghostless champion, mm -hmm. yeah. um, he had no utility mobility summoner spell, so it was the easy target. Even if you remove the player from the equation, it made perfect sense for HDK to focus him. I'd like to see him play a little bit of a safer champion today, not such a heavy, hard carry in your debut game on the yeah. stage, and we'll see whether or not uh, Rocket and more importantly, Yamata can and their coach agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. He's in there as a new force as well. If we dial in on a little bit more of the individual performances, Woolite in lane doing pretty well, 30 CS ahead but none of the players really could capitalize on whatever they got going early, even though they put down some pressure. There was Nuke Duck letting the Fizz roam top, so definitely needing some work. It kind of felt like Rocket were not necessarily on the same page yesterday, and something that Krepo said you know, in the cast and, and multiple times off air, Woolite had actually won his lane. He had that strong CS advantage that you've mentioned, Sharks, but unfortunately, it didn't equate to the item advantage it needed to at the right time. Um, Nuke Duck, with some greedy back timing, spoke to XPK a little bit this, this morning uh, about how Fizz was able to get away from a lane against a Cassiopeia, like how is that possible? 
If Rocket, I feel, were a little bit more aligned, a little bit more on the same page with their shot calling, that game could have gone differently because I quite like their picks and bans. And I think we'd like to, I'd like to see them getting on the same page, especially because Nuke Duck's in my fantasy team. Yeah, <laughs> all right. Well, if yesterday was a bad start for them, this game is definitely going to be do or die for Rocket as well, even though we're really early in the season. And they are up against Gambit Gaming on the red side for this one with Kabushar, Diamond Prox, Betsy, Forgiven, Ghost of Pepper, and their coach, Moo. Yesterday, if you look at the game and at the stats, uh, um, well, after it, you might say, wow, this was a really dominating win for Elements versus Gambit. But early, it was pretty good for Gambit with the lanes pushing early. So I kind of want to ask you guys, with Forgiven in there, we know that that and the early pushing is something that comes from the way SK like to play. Will that turn into be a negative or a positive for Gambit if you look at yesterday's game? It's so debatable, I think. Because depending on your viewpoint and what you prioritize mm -hmm. as good League of Legends depends on what your final opinion comes out. I like the fact that Gambit showed... Uh, a heavy pushing style, all three lanes were aggressive, all three lanes were in Elements' faces, and they took out the turrets extremely quickly. I don't know if I like the Evelyn from Diamond. It was a little questionable. He could have done a little more. Maybe, um, you know, there's a lot of questions. Could he have counter jungle? Could... He had support from lanes if he'd been in the jungle. My biggest issue came from the fact that it felt like Gambit just weren't necessarily 100% practice with that. They were all pushing, they were all heavy, they were all overextending, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, that's one of the, the biggest things about yesterday's game is I feel like their coach, uh, Moo, may have had a little bit too much of an effect on the team, perhaps, because Forgiven was out grazing in the fields for most of that game, and the rest <laughs> of Gambit, uh, they were pushing up. Are you and, hungry? <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit, but I, I'm hungry for some League of Legends here. No, but, uh, you know, SK, the difference was... SK were playing smart, they were playing safe, they weren't overextending. Gambit now with Forgiven, when Forgiven was over in another lane, just weren't playing so safe. They were stepping into areas, getting picked off. And one thing I do have to highlight, I was particularly impressed by Gosu Pepper on Thresh again. Um, yes, it was into an Urgot, so I, I would like to think it's a little easier to land some of those death sentences, but I feel like the combination of aggression between Forgiven and Gosu Pepper is actually a great synergy in their styles. And I'm hoping the Thresh Prince can once again dust off his crown and his cape and, and whatnot and come back because... It's been sorely missed. He's not been at the same level that he was a little while ago. And as the scene is continuing to grow, Edward now goes to has a, a higher peak to hit. Yeah, and definitely, uh, well, it was Krepo here on the desk that said it. There is definitely potential in that bottom lane and maybe the matched aggression for Edward coming out there as well. If we look at this matchup as a whole, Gamut, of course, has some extenuating, is that, was that correct? Yeah. Circumstances, they've had had some trouble with infrastructure. And on the other side, Rockat has had everything for a while now, although they have the new top laner to learn and work with. But it is definitely do or die. It is. And I actually think if you step back and look at the styles, I think Rockat's in trouble in this matchup because yesterday Gamut showed a lot of early aggression. Rock out with one small change in the top lane. Um, have not adjusted their style a whole lot. And in spring, their games ran really long. They had to dig deep and come from behind. I think if they fall that far behind to Gambit, we might see Rocket faltering much the same way they did to HDK. Yeah, we will see how it plays out. And although picking up the spring split MVP sounds like a good roster move, Nuke Duck thinks that adding Forgiven to the bottom lane may cost Gambit more than they bargained for. Forgiven makes every team play his style when he joins the team and there is no middle ground even. So what Gambit were strong on last split was like playing not around bot lane at all. Uh, they left all farm for like Diamond and Cabo Shard want to control the game, which is probably the best way. And now maybe that will change and, and they will become weaker because of that. Well, may it cost them more than they bargained for indeed, Krepo, we'll have to see. Yeah, definitely last split. If you look back to the graphs we showed at the first day, Gambit, they managed to get a lead. They were in that top four stat of like early aggression, 0 to 15, and they, they've completely turned it around. No more killing champions. We're only killing towers and minions right now, and it can work.